Hello YouTube watchers, it's Andrew again with another how-to video and this time I am replacing the brakes and the rotors or discs or whatever on this car. I've just done the other side and I've got one tip to share with you so that the tyre is off. Alright, and now I've taken the, this part's all out, it's all good. Um, it's time to get this off and I just it, it's tight it's very tight so I've got one little tip for you okay so I'm about to show you so basically you, your instinct tells you to pull this forward right to try to get it this way except it just doesn't want to budge so what you need to do is you get a hammer and you like you're gonna get rid of this anyway so you hit that way there and there and and there and all around there right so the theory is when you hit here, because this is one big piece, like one solid piece, when you hit here, it's going to bring that that side forward, okay? And then when you hit here, it's going to bring that side forward. And when you hit here, it's going to bring, you, you get the idea. So you got to actually hit in, and that loosens it all up, okay? There we go. Uh, I'm going to try this one first, to be soft and gentle, but I've got the heavy one just in case. See it when it moves. There we go. Look at that. Ta da! Easy as that. Okay, so that's it. So, a little soft mallet worked. Um, yeah, so I'll keep the video rolling because I want to get to 10 minutes. So, this is a 2010 Holden sports wagon. We've got two of them. Um, so I'm getting to know these cars quite well. They're pretty easy to work on. Um, so uh, yeah, I've um, I'm really really happy with them. They're, this part, this part's pretty easy. So apart from that little tip that I just showed you, like I'm really loving these cars. Um, plenty of power, three liter city engine. Um, direct injected engine and it's, it's a little bit older technology now but I don't know it feels pretty good to me what's really good about them so the seats man you cannot go past the seats in this car it's so good uh, it's a really comfortable you know Turismo touring seats it's like the old school seats not none of this you know SUV modern stuff um, Shockies are pretty good. Um, cruises quite nicely on the highway. The styling, well, you know, everyone has their own taste, but I reckon this still looks like a car. Like the Commodore series has kept improving over the years and got a little bit softer on the, on the front. And, and then a sports wagon, they introduced this uh, sort of sweeping wagon section whereas before it was very much boxy like a you know like a hearse sort of shape um, which was really good in terms of space like heaps of space now this it's got pretty good space but obviously not as much as they used to have um, tires relatively cheap for the car I think I paid about 150 Australian for these ones they're really good and I'll tell you what I'll just put a little word in for these Yokohama Blue Earth A's they are the best wet weather tire I've ever had I don't know what it is about them but I can still drive as per normal have not lost traction at all uh, some sort of dark magic in these Blue Earth A's so yeah I really love them I need to clean those rooms again a bit dirty um, what else? Oh yes, so it still runs fine on 91. Uh, they see got the same tire on this car. That's how much we like them. Um, runs pretty good on 91, but we sometimes put in 95 and 98. And this car has uh, got about 180,000 on it. Runs quite nicely, even on 91. Um, 
but this one here so our main car it's uh it's hitting over 200 now and uh it, we it's starting to have a little bit of a um of a noise so definitely ha we, we're putting 95 at least in this one from now on and it just gets rid of that little i don't know what you call it it's just like a slight engine rattle like a I don't know what it is, but yeah, 95 seems to cure it. Okay, so the things that are not as pleasant about this car. So something that's a little bit sort of in between is the fuel economy. So in a city, you're getting between sort of 10 and a half, 11 liters for every 100 Ks, um, which is all right for a six cylinder, I suppose. But, um, you know, there's much better options in the smaller cars, obviously. Uh, on the highway, sort of eight and a half liters. So really nice on the highway. It, that's um, quite competitive but yeah and it cruises very nicely like I said before um, what else what else oh yeah on mine the cruise control has stopped working <laughs> I don't quite know what's wrong with it apparently might be the stalk but it could be some sensor like a brake sensor I don't think that's what it is on mine but yes yeah, so that's another thing that is not working on mine it works perfectly on that one but not on this one. Um, okay, so also on that car, Melinda's car, the rear struts went. I mean, that's, a, I suppose, a, one of those items that's going to happen um, most of the times anyway. You're going to have to change those. But so the rear struts uh, stopped working on that car. I think she got some from, from eBay or something, something online. Really cheap, and they are as good as new. Really easy to replace as well. So it, it, struts are easy. And the mechanism the little locking mechanism on the boot I'll just show you this is a known item on these cars so down here up here it's got like a i don't think you're gonna see it but it's got like a touch sensor style opener you're probably not gonna see it up in there and when that malfunctions because apparently some water can go in through this section here and then it can ruin that sensor um when they replace it they sometimes make a bracket and they said to us at the uh, um mechanic that we took it that no it's fine They'll, they can do it now they won't be breaking the bracket because they worked out how to do it but alas they did break the bracket and they were going to charge us a heap more money to get a new part because the bracket being broken means it wouldn't fit very flush it wouldn't fit nicely so but no, I said to them that, you know, you said it's not going to break. This is the price you, um, you know, we agreed on. And then they said, then they said, well, we can't, what can we do? I said, well, you need to fix it. So they kind of got some sort of a um, adhesive and they put that in instead. And I reckon it's probably working better than it would have anyway, because it might actually prevent some of that water from getting in there. Okay, so one question you might be asking is is it good for a family so you can easily get three seats in the back um, three good size um, baby seats child seats no problems at all and okay another thing towing capacity so mine has a two bar and has pulled some fairly heavy things and a uh, tradesman trailer uh, no worries at all um, Melinda does not have one, um, but, um, yeah, pretty good. Okay, the stereo system is okay. Now, being 2010, they're both two, there's only a couple of months between the two cars. This one, I can connect my phone to through the stereo. Just, just the phone section. Not, I can't play music through the connection, but I can connect my phone. This one. I can't so I'm not sure what happened between this month and this month <laughs> but apparently um, they gave it some extra functionality I think you can add a module that makes it Bluetooth capable like full Bluetooth capable but um, yeah don't have it here so um, yeah we just use one of those FM modulator things but apart from that it's um, there yeah really enjoying these cars gonna probably have a tool uh, they uh, die on us so Alright everyone, that's it for now. If you've got any questions, let me know. Yeah, I, I've, I'll try to answer, but um, you know, I'm only just getting to know some of these bits and pieces about the car, and um, yeah, but maybe I might be able to help you out. 
Right, until the next video, ciao.